so if you want to do automated gtaw you are typically looking at three things that help you automate a process first is weaving which is covering a wider bead second is avc which is helping you adjust or accommodate your ovalities of the job so if you had a job which was oval and rotating then your arc length distance will change every time so this helps you compensate that and third is your wire feeders so we have discussed the wire feeders right now which were manual in automated wire feeders you can use single or twin wire feeders so if you are using twin wire you would have two wires coming into the same pool and one would be leading other would be trailing if the torch was moving in this direction or the job was rotating in this direction you could have typically got a throughput which was much higher by using twin wire right uh, we did some productivity calculations comparisons with uh, twin wire and what we found was that in cold wire tick automated uh, when they were doing cladding they were able to achieve speeds of about 1 to 1.2 kgs per hour with standard cold wire single single wire fed with the same parameters when they used an hot wire power source they could increase the productivity by 10 to 15% immediately okay. so you see the travel speed has gone up by almost 20% from 150 mm to 180 mm and the material deposited is up by about 15% sir i am sorry to interrupt i did not understand the uh, arrangement which ensures that the uh, system adjusts to overlay in the job uh, uh, jain sir in the in the next slide i am showing you a, uh, in the next two slides i'll show you that particular process to explain thank how it works thank you thank you very much here i am just sharing you the uh, comparison of productivity increase or the speed increase by using cold wire hot wire and twin wire so between the three we can increase the productivity by about 20 to 45% so if you use only hot wire you are getting an increment of about 20% and with twin wire we are getting 45% increment whereas deposition rates that was the rate at which the wire was deposited went from 1 kg per hour to to about 2 and a half kgs per hour by using twin wire and that to hot now as sir was asking what are the tools that we shared was one of the tools was weaving so what weaving does is allows you to cover a larger area so if you see here we are covering a larger bead size by moving the torch up and down this up down movement is called weaving and if you have a narrow gap then we weave it as we call it as oscillators where you are doing an angular oscillation in either case the important thing is how fast you are moving how much you want to move up down or left right and at, at the each end you know when you are moving if you look at here when you are rotating at each corner you have to pause a bit if yeah. you see the wire the the it's pausing a bit this is called dwell time dwell time is important because it gives you the clarity on uh, lack of fusion of the edges so if you don't pause you will have lack of fusion with the pauses you don't have the lack of fusion now we come to avc avc means automatic voltage corrector now this is what we were talking about for adjustment of your ovality now what happens if you have an uneven surface or an oval surface if the torch was going straight down here what would happen the distance from the torch tip will change in all these places where there is uneven surfaces right yeah. Yeah. and ideally it would either uh, burn through your surface or it will hit the tungsten onto this bump here but what we do we take a feedback of the arc voltage which also represents the distance and from the arc voltage we control this motorized slide with a closed closed loop circuit now what that does is ensures the arc distance is always same so if this distance was 2 mm throughout the travel it will remain 2 mm so i'll just play this for you so you see the torch is automatically adjusting based on this gap now this is because of avc so this is how an avc works it takes the feedback and it gives it to the motor to control now this is what we also use on larger scopes when we are using it with the different kinds of automation which will follow through sir now these are the kind of automation say panel uh, tube to tube boiling uh, boiler tube to tube welding or straight tube butt welding lines 
then we have titanium tube to tube welding systems for steam generator project and then you have uh, butt welders for spooling operations that is pipe to flange then you have pipe to flange welding as spms for valves long seamers and then you have uh, column boom heads so these three things join together at various ways to give you the same result so here you have a straight tube butt welder so if you make panel boilers like thermax bhe others now you have to do these uh, joints here for tube to tube now this can be pipe to pipe tube to tube anything you want i'll just play the video while i'm explaining now what this does is this axis on the vertical if you see here plays as the avc this axis does the weaving job and here you have the cold wire feeder which is feeding the wire yeah. so if you saw here the uh, just explain one more thing again now if you see in the automated setup the tungsten is touching the job and retracting fixed distance of 2 3 mm whatever you set after this while the rotation is on the system is automatically maintaining that height what you are wanting always say if you looking at 12 volts it will maintain 12 volts all the time okay. and this is when the ovality comes in that tungsten will either go closer or it will go further away and if you look here you can see the wire being fed into the pole directly so this is where they are doing the root weld in automation so this ensures consistency all throughout and in all the eight sectors or your segments of different uh, parts in the tube you can adjust your currents in the automation setup this way and when you stop the weld you will see the wire retract and you will see the current slowly go down so that is down slope and then the wire retracting okay oh. this is the reason why you don't have the wire touching or staying put in the uh, pool okay yeah yes. good question sir yes sir please please in this uh, once i install the automated system does the skill requirement of the welders change there is no welder skill now the welder is to only see when the job is uh, being rotated and the arc is in the right position once the parameters are set for every job it will repeat the same so your skill level of the welder will go very down thank you definitely sir this is happening in thermax we have given the system to thermax and also a part of this similar setups have gone to godrej and uh, others now this here if you look at it this is your spooling automation so if you had a larger pipe you wanted to add pipe to pipe pipe to elbow pipe to fitting flange reducers there you have to do root and then you have to be do multi pass so this is say for example a 50 thick pipe then you have to do multiple passes on top of it yes so a similar way you could use the avc weaving and the wire feeding arm to this to get these kind of well beat results again the skill level of the welder goes down this is one example of a customer in middle east who bought about 25 such sets they are into oil and gas pooling so this is the complete spooling arrangement as you can see pipe to flange pipe to elbows reducers all being welded onto the same system these are the kind of heavy spools that can be made so a quick video to explain again how this works so you have the automatic pig head here which would have the avc the weaving you have the power source which is the alex which you were sharing earlier and the idlers if you had a longer job they would rest on the idlers the chiller to cool the torch head now if you see here the weaving this is the torch the wire feeding cold wire feeding coming with it this is the kind of bead patterns you can get and the job is rotating the wire the welding would oscillate here and do the avc and the cold wire feeding addition this way you get the good results of weld beads each time if you had smaller pipe to flanges right like you do your nozzle heads now you have a flange you want to weld the id and the uh, od yeah. then we could give you a setup like this which could weld it in 1g position thereby you have less chances of failure and more uh, accurate penetration so the pipe to flange can be held between a head stock tail stock it could be raised to 45 degrees and this rotating arm would rotate the job well uh, whereas that tick would weld in this position a similar smaller setup for 
uh, valves where we have pipe to flange butt joints again a butt joint and then a pipe to flange joint uh, some uh, examples of what you can see how the weld looks like if you had a difficult position where you wanted to weld even that could be taken care of like you see a different kind of a nozzle here to do very narrow gap and here there is a wider gap so you use a normal nozzle to do the welding again a uh, cold wire feeding and avc are in play in both these places <clears throat> this is the kind of setup you want for your uh, sheet to sheet welding or plate to plate welding yeah. sorry these are called long seamers wherein uh, we have given up to 4 and 6 meter long seamers where you uh, place the plates on these two sides so one comes from this side the copper fingers latch it then the other plate comes butts on this side they latch it from here and then the welding happens again on this axis you have the avc the weaving and the cold wire feeding and the linear axis for the travel is there so the torch would weld come down touch retract and start welding and it would keep going on the other direction right here you see the same setup mounted onto a column boom so the autotick head is mounted uh, here and uh, you are welding in a either an 11 o'clock position or a 12 o'clock position and the welding is happening continuously while the headstock tailstock is rotating the job okay and uh, if you wanted to move the entire column boom it could be moved on a rack based system yeah. and the job should be rotated so i think for most of your tanks you would have a similar setup like this This is a 3.2 meter job. I think your job requirements is about 2 meters. Since yeah, your thicknesses okay. are also small, 6 mm yeah. to 12 mm, I think you will be requiring to use spider like this to maintain your ovality yeah. and uh, your uh, concentricity rather. And you could hold the shaft in headstock tail stocks, and then the column boom could adjust the position of weld and start the welding. Yeah. This is the Alex power source, hot wire power source. and the cold wire feeder is mounted on top here integrated as a head yeah. now if your diameters were not very large then you had a lot of uh, smaller pipe to pipe joints or pipe to elbow joints then you could use a configuration like this a positioner or a rotator hold it in the chuck then you have an idler to support and the head can move at different locations if you wanted to weld at different positions in the same axis yeah. so here you can see a 8 mm pipe i think 300 nominal bore carbon steel being welded in two pass and this was again using avc weaving and cold wire feeder right okay. okay. this was done for a company called watsila in uh, kapoli uh, they are a finnish company they were into auxiliary power uh, systems so we have done pipe to pipe systems like this if you are doing overlay or cladding then we have a complete range of solutions for overlay and cladding if you had to say overlay in conel monel or stainless steel on tube sheets pipes flanges then you have vertical cladding stations horizontal or universal cladding stations which could do both horizontal and vertical these are the kind of joints done on uh, cladding stations so you have the bore being cladded then the flange face this is a t being cladded an elbow and here you have a, a small bore about uh, 50 mm being cladded the entire length yeah. these are horizontal stations when you wanted to do pipe cladding so you could do a lot of pipe 6 m to 12 m long pipes could be done on this and um, you can have single head twin head or quad head that means four welding heads inside one station itself so this is a quad head one two three four machines four wire feeders and four uh, uh, hot wire power sources and the torches there are uh, happens in four stations one two three four so there's a lance torch which goes inside the pipe and you could weld 3 meters at a time and by the time you finish 3 meters your entire 12 meter long pipe would be cladded this is a big advantage 